You guys, I think the floor is actually lava. It's actually lava. What if we take a step? Oh no, oh no. I'm like neck deep. I'm waist deep, neck deep. Oh. <laughs> What's up everyone? Welcome to our third and final chapter in creating our Floor is Lava mini game. Hopefully you've had a good time so far. Today we're going to finish the project by creating a damage volume with an actor blueprint so our character takes damage from something other than the player hitting a specific button that was created in a third person character blueprint. And we're going to create a quick material for our lava as well since right now it's just a white plane in our level. To get started, in the content browser, let's go ahead and right click, create a new blueprint, and this one's gonna be of the type actor. This blueprint can be an actor since it doesn't need to move around or anything, it doesn't have to have any character input, so it's just gonna be an actor in the level. Basic actor will work perfectly. Let's give it a name like BP Lava Damage. Double click that bad boy to open it up. And when you open up the actor, the only thing that you'll see is the default scene root, which when you put it in the level is just going to kind of tell you where that actor is. The only thing that we're going to really need for this actor is a component called box collision. Let's go ahead and click there. That way we go ahead and add it to our actor. Now remember that a blueprint is just a collection of components up here on the top left with some scripting to tell the engine what to do with these components. Now that we've added a box collision to it, that's really all that we're going to need. Buckle up your seat belts because we're going to create the first event that's not manually triggered by the player. If we select our box collision here and scroll down in the details panel, we actually have a bunch of events that we can use in our event graph. And we're going to go ahead and click on this one, on component begin overlap which basically tells the engine when this thing happens, do everything that's connected to the execute. And in our specific case, that thing is gonna be when something begins to overlap with our box collision. And we're gonna begin this event by casting to our third person character off of the actor. Since our third person character blueprint is also an actor, we can go ahead and drag off here and cast to third person character. And similar to like in the previous video, it's going to check to see if our third person character blueprint is the one that begins overlapping with this box. If it is, everything connected to the top execute will fire. If it's not, everything connected to this bottom execute will fire. Now, if it is, we do want to promote that third person character blueprint to a variable. That way we have access to it in our lava damage blueprint. It's super helpful because then we can go ahead and call functions for our third person character blueprint while we're in our lava damage function. I know that it gets a little confusing once again when you're dealing with other blueprints inside of another blueprint, but you'll see why it's so helpful to do. Let's give this a name like player character. Let's drag off of this bottom pin here and when our character begins to overlap with this box collision in our lava damage, so if we go to our level, when this character or any character with this blueprint starts to overlap with this box, we want to check to see if it is that third person character and then we are going to take damage. And we can already see that this is going to work. If we go and we hit play, let's go ahead and walk forward and we took damage, but it's only happening once. That's because the execute ends as soon as we take damage. What we want to do here is delay for a period of time, I'm just going to have us delay for maybe a half a second. And after that, I actually want to check something. I'm going to do a branch. I just want to see if our third person character blueprint is still overlapping. And if they are overlapping, we're going to pull the true and we're going to go all the way over to take damage again. And this will create an effect that continuously takes damage every single half a second. If we're still overlapping, we just have to set the condition. And the way we check that is just with an is overlapping actor node. This will give us a return value with a boolean, either a true or a false. We just need to see if our player character is overlapping with our self, because our self is the lava damage actor. Now, when we play, we'll go ahead and walk forward. Every half a second, we're taking some damage. 
ow. And it's pretty easy to understand why. After we take damage, it'll delay a half a second, or you can actually set this to any value that you want. It'll check to see if our player character is still overlapping any part of our lava damage. If it is, it's going to roll back around and take damage, do the delay again, do the check again, and over and over and over until we're no longer overlapping. To test that, let's go ahead and enter, and then let's stop overlapping, and the damage stops. Really easy. And now you have a basic damage actor. Your first one. <laughs> so no matter where we put this blueprint in our level, if our third person character or any character that's a child of that blueprint starts overlapping with it, they'll start to take the set amount of damage in our take damage function. And that's going to happen every single time the delay ends as long as they're still overlapping the actor. Now I'm going to put this to the test by putting our damage actor underneath the plane. And I'm going to scale it really large. So I'm going to zoom out in our viewport. Remember you can right click WASD. E will go ahead and bring you way up. Q will go ahead and bring it down. Instead of translating, which just moves this, we're going to go ahead and scale it, and we're going to scale it all the way in the X until it's gigantic, big enough so I can see it at least. And apparently it just really needs to be huge. And then let's go ahead and scale it also in the Y. It doesn't need to scale in the Z because then we'll just start taking damage as soon as we spawn. And as soon as we fall in the lava, we're going to start taking damage. Ouch. There's actually something else that I wanted to teach you real quick before we get into the material about inputs for our take damage function. I think you're really gonna like learning about them, so let's just dive into that real quick and then we can start doing materials after. If we head back into our third person character blueprint and go into our take damage function, we'll see that every single time we take damage, we're taking a set amount of 25% of our maximum health. And I kinda wanna customize that. I don't want to take 25% every single time I hit the E key and every single time that I take damage from our damage volume. So if I want different things to happen for different amounts every single time I take damage, what I have to use is something called an input, which is here on the details panel. If I go ahead and add an input, it's going to ask me what type of input I want it to be. And I want it to be the same type that's just subtracting from our health. So I want it to be a float. And I'm going to call this amount of damage. And we can see that now we have an input here on our take damage function node. If I drag off of it and replace the 25% here, the 25% disappears and now it's always hooked up to our input of how much damage we take. Immediately, if we go to our lava damage, we'll actually see the take damage function look different. And we can customize how much damage we take from the lava. Let's change this to maybe 5%, and let's change the delay to maybe a hundredth of a second. And on our third person character, every single time we hit E, I don't want to take zero damage. Let's make that do half of our health, 50%. And we can test this out. As soon as we go ahead and play, if I hit E, that took away half of my health. E again, and I die. Let's go ahead and play, and this time I'll jump into the lava. And you see, instead of taking 50% every single time I take damage from the lava, I'm actually taking a small amount. It's just the delay is also really small, so I get a gradual damage as my health lurps from green to red. This is actually happening too fast, so let's go ahead and do, you know, maybe about 5 hundredths and jump into the lava. That's a little bit better. And you can fiddle around with the damage and the delay just so you kind of get the effect that you want. If you don't mind having a not smooth transition, then you can have high delays and high damage, or you can have small delays and small amounts of damage for a more gradual health bar experience. When you go ahead and drop down, it's pretty gradual with the numbers that I have. I think I'm just gonna stick with this. It's you know about 3% damage every five one hundredths of a second. And that's a small introduction to inputs, and you can probably already see how helpful they are. You can use the same function for multiple different things. If I were to create, you know, an ice damage volume or an electric damage volume, we can have each of those do different amounts of damage. It's pretty easy. But let's go ahead and transition over to materials, and we're just going to make a simple one for the lava real quick. And we haven't covered creating materials on this channel before, so we're just going to create a simple one. We can go into material expressions and material instances in the future. Let's go ahead and actually create a folder in our content browser. And let's call this folder materials. 
We're going to go ahead and right click and create a new material and we're just going to call it M underscore lava. M standing for material and lava being the type of material that it is. I recommend getting used to these naming conventions because once you start working on projects with multiple people, these naming conventions become very important to increase your workflow. So let's try to build good habits. Double click on the material to open it and you'll see the material editor. The top left is going to show you a real-time preview of your material so far. The main graph here will show you all of the pins that you can plug in to alter this material. The top pin is the base color, being the diffuse of your material. For simple materials or for prototyping, you can use this pin and it should be enough to get the point across of what the material is meant to represent. The base color is affected by lighting in the level, so we're actually going to skip this one and we're going to move straight to emissive color. Emissive colors don't require lighting to be shown. They'll appear to glow instead of just looking like a picture. This is good for things with high amount of energy like explosions, lava, fire, lasers, anything that really kind of glows due to the amount of energy that's inside of it. So let's just stick with this pin for this material. We'll go into further detail on the rest of the material nodes and pins in the future because there's a lot of options here, but we're just going to stick with emissive color for this one. And here in the material graph, we are going to right click just to get a texture. Go ahead and search for a texture sample. And let's plug that right into the emissive here. But we do have to choose a texture that we want it to be. And we can do that here on the left on the details panel. If you have imported the starter content, that should be perfect. Actually, everything that we'll need here is in the starter content. And the texture that we're going to look for is called Fire Tiled D. Go ahead and plug that right in. Let's save and grab that material. Go ahead and throw it right on the plane. And instantly, you'll see it compiling the shaders. And it looks a little rough. Definitely looks a little rough here. In fact, I'm going to scale down our plane a little bit that way. That way it's not so stretched, maybe 150. You know, already it's, it's really not looking too bad, but we want it to kind of flow like lava. In order to do that in the material, we actually have to grab something called a panner. If you're familiar with any sort of camera shots or even photo editing, you should know that panning is just moving parallel to a subject without rotating. And we're gonna do that with the UVs of our texture. So let's go ahead and look for a panner plug that right into the UVs. And I'm just gonna start off with something like one, go ahead and save. And it looks a little fast, just a little fast. Wow. And I actually don't really care for the direction that it's going in. So let's rotate it. So that's some fast lava. Lava really doesn't flow that fast in real life. So we're gonna have to lower our pan speed Let's change it to something like 0 0.03. That way it's more of like a molten flowing lava. All you have to do is save here and then we can go ahead and see how it looks in the level. That's much more of a realistic speed. It actually still might be a little too fast for molten lava. And let's take a look at that. That actually seems like a pretty decent speed for lava but it does seem a little dim. And we can turn up the brightness by multiplying the texture sample here by a, a pretty high amount. Let's go ahead and right click on the graph, pull up a multiply, plug that right into the A, and plug that into the emissive. That way the texture is no longer directly plugged into the emissive, the multiply is. And this amount here, B is gonna be set here in our details panel. Right now it's just set to one, which means that it's, it's not changing at all. If you multiply something by one, then it's just the same value. Let's try something like 100. So we multiply the texture sample by 100 and let's go ahead and see what it looks like. It looks really bright. <laughs> if we look at it in our level, it is really, really bright and we can actually see it. it's glowing. It lights up our level. You can see the light coming off the walls, reflecting off of our character. So it's not like a fake light. It's actually lighting up objects around it with this material. This is a little too bright for me. This is, this is like really, really fresh lava, you know, magma coming straight out the ground. I think I'm gonna tone mine down a little bit. I, I messed around with the values and I'm just gonna stick around with something like 25. 
That way it's still glowing and it's still hot and you can still see some light being bounced off of our character and our level, but it's not insanely bright. That's about it for our Floors Lava game. <laughs> we have a character that can bounce around the level, they can take damage, they can fall into our lava. We have a collision volume underneath the plane that will give us damage every single time that we start touching the lava. You know, video games are kind of full of the, this kind of trickery. When our health reaches zero, our character dies. Something special happens when we die. We've got our color changing health bar, basic level setup, and something that resembles lava at least. Let's try to uh, get to the other side of this level. We're taking a little bit of damage, just a little bit. If I hit E, I will immediately die, I think. Yeah. Ugh. And that's gonna bring this video to a close. Uh, thank you so much for following along all the way through. This is uh, the end of our Flores Lava game. Um, but let me know if you want me to polish up anything in there or kind of go into the next topic that would logically progress the game to make it less of a mini game and, and more of an actual game. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm here to help you think like a game developer, so stick around for more videos like this.